Hi, I'm Gary Bailey, and this is the I Bible School. We're coming up on Lesson 27 in our series on a life of prayer. We're going to be talking about praise, uh, marking your life with praise, or mark your life with praise. So stay with us. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're talking about prayer, and one important part of prayer is praise and worship. Because once we've initially uh, asked God for whatever it is that we need or whatever it is we want in prayer, uh, we ought to continue <clears throat> uh, to pray and not asking him or begging him for what he's already promised to give us, but praising him for the answer. So it's important in prayer that we learn to praise God and worship him in the process of, of prayer. So uh, praise God. After we've initially asked God, we need to continue to praise God. So I'm uh, talking about mark, marking our life with praise. You know, David, King David from the Old Testament, he started out as a shepherd boy, and he learned a great secret. He uh, fought off the lion and the bear as a young man, and then he fought Goliath and became captain of Saul's army. He was later chased down by Saul, had to hide out in caves like an animal in the wilderness. And later, because of the promise of God, he became king and led the armies of Israel into battle. Later, he, uh, you know, he got off track some and he committed murder and adultery, uh, but he continued as king. But throughout the life of David, one thing that we see that marks his life as unique from all others, and that is that he marked his life with praise. Regardless of what David was going through, Regardless of what he experienced, David was praising God in the middle of it. And I'm sure he had requests and he had desires and he had uh, prayers that were offered up to God. But all along the way, he continued to praise God. You know, a lot of folks believe that, you know, well, we need to pray and then just just forget uh and move on. After you prayed once, that's enough. No, uh, we're not to pray and forget. We're to pray and continue in prayer, but not necessarily asking God again or begging God again, because he's already promised to give it to us. You know, if we ask our parents for something and they say yes, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, or a child, if a child would ask a, a parent for something and they say yes, I'll I'll give that to you. Uh, you can expect it at Christmas time. And, and so uh, throughout the year, you know, you might put in a little reminder and say, uh, oh, thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad. Uh, I'm really looking forward to Christmas because you promised me that Red Rider BB gun or you promised me that uh, uh, that bicycle with a banana seat. Uh, you promised me, uh, you know, a dollhouse or whatever it is that you ask. And you just... Uh, rather than begging them or pleading with them, would you please give that to me? Would you please? And if they've already told you you're going to get it at Christmas time, then uh, you have nothing else to do other than to, to just remind them on occasion, say thank you, you know, for the promise that you made to me. And uh, that's the way it is with God. We don't want to continue to beg God and ask God again and again for what it is that we want or desire of him. But after we've asked and after we've uh, uh, based our prayer on the promise of God and on the will of God, we simply return to him in thanksgiving and praise and worship, thanking him for what he is doing and what he's done in our lives. Praise God. Uh, but this was David's life. Throughout his life, he marked his life with praise. In Acts chapter 13 and verse 22, 
uh, the Bible tells us, and when he had removed him, he raised up unto them David to be their king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, which shall fulfill all my will. So here you have uh, uh, the writer of, uh, actually Luke, uh, testifying to the fact that David was a man after God's own heart. You know, it wasn't just about, uh, you know, receiving things from God. It was about having a relationship with God. It was about thanking him for his abundant provision and blessing in his life. We see the same thing in the life of Joseph. Joseph marked his life with praise. He had a dream from God. He had a, a heavenly vision where he saw himself in a leadership role and uh, uh, ruling in, in his family and in, in the land. And uh, he made the mistake. Sometimes there's some visions, some dreams uh, that you shouldn't share with some people. Uh, you know, you have to share it with people that are supporting you and backing you and are for you. But some people get jealous, you know, if you're getting something from heaven, getting something from God. And this was a case of his brothers. And rather than uh, bless him and support him and encourage him as the younger brother, uh, they uh, they were initially going to kill him for, for it. And, uh, you know, with steadier heads in charge, uh, the eldest of the brothers said no let's uh, let's not kill him let's just put him in a pit and uh, that's exactly what they did they put him in a pit and along uh, uh, actually they took him out when they saw a caravan coming along uh, going to Egypt and sold him as a slave for 20 pieces of silver so in this instance uh, Joseph was like unto the son of God because Jesus was betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. And so Joseph was sold as a slave and he was uh, sent on to, uh, to Egypt where he uh, was purchased by a man named Potiphar. And, and uh, Joseph just went to work. Joseph went to work cleaning the pots and pans and doing what he knew to do. And, and uh, the Bible says whatever he did, whatever was done, he was the doer of it. And all along the way, Joseph praised the Lord. And we know this. Uh, I'll show you a particular scripture along those lines. But, but as we follow Joseph, he maintained his relationship with God, maintained his fellowship with God, maintained his integrity. You know, when uh, Potiphar's wife accused him of, of adultery and, and uh, you know, and actually she wanted to commit adultery and Joseph wouldn't do it. He wanted to honor God in his life. And so he ran from her. But uh, it kind of backfired on Joseph. And and uh, she accused him of adultery. Or actually not adultery, but rape. And so um, Potiphar, though, <laughs> he knew people. And uh, thank God, you know, he could have had him killed at that point or that moment. But but he knew that Joseph was a man of honor. He was a man of integrity and a man of honesty. And he couldn't bring himself to kill Joseph, so he threw him in the prison. Uh, he wanted to honor and respect his wife because his wife insisted that Joseph had lied with him, uh, even though she was lying. And he most likely knew she was lying. Uh, but nevertheless, he spent time in prison. So rather than uh, things getting better for Joseph, things got worse, and he continued on there. But all through this time, he maintained the promise and he maintained the vision and the dream that God had given him uh, in ruling and reigning. And uh, as he uh, continued in this vein, he'd been a slave, he'd been in the prison house, he continued to praise God. In fact, Psalm 81 verses 1 through 5 tells us this sing aloud unto God our strength make a joyful noise unto the God of Jacob take a psalm and bring hither the temporal 
the pleasant harp with the psaltery. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute forever. This was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. What was a statute? What was the law of Israel? It was, or a statute uh, for Israel. It was praise. It was worship. Praise God. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. For this was a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony. When he was out, went out through the land of Egypt, where I heard a language that I understood not. So Joseph praised the Lord. Joseph worshipped God. If you looked at Joseph, one thing that uh, set him apart from others was the fact that he praised God in the midst of difficult and troublesome circumstances. When the answer is not coming, when things aren't working out for you, uh, continue to praise the Lord. Um, this is what David did. And uh, later on, we, we see that Abraham was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Praise God. Isn't that wonderful? I mean, Abraham waited for years to see the promise of God come to pass. But while he was waiting, he didn't sit there and complain. He didn't sit there and lament the fact that he didn't have a child. No, Abraham increased and strengthened his faith by praising God, by giving glory to God. Everyone experiences problems, saint and sinner alike. Through all of life's ups and downs, a life of praise will put you on the victory side. So keep that in mind. If you want to stay in victory, if you want to walk in victory, then, uh, then continue to praise God, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what you feel or what you see, uh, continue to praise and worship God. I believe that, that praise is the highest manifestation of faith in a person's life is to praise him and to offer up the sacrifice of praise. What is a sacrifice of praise? When there's nothing seemingly around you to praise God for, but you praise him anyway. You continue to praise him and worship him and bless him. Praise God. So uh, through all of life's circumstances, through life's ups and downs, a life of praise will put you on the victory, victory side. Jesus was a worshiper and Jesus was a praiser. Peter knew to praise the Lord when things seemed their worst. Peter praised God. We see that when Paul and Silas were in prison, that they praised God at the midnight hour. Well, what does that mean? When things were darkest, when things were bleakest, when it didn't look like anything was going to turn around, Paul and Silas praised the Lord. Praise God. Uh, we can live in victory or we can go from crisis to crisis. Uh, the Bible tells us in Psalm 107 and verse 43, Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. If I turn there real quickly, and I, I won't take a lot of time, but uh, in Psalm 107, we see two approaches to God. And here in this uh, passage of Scripture, we, we see he begins here in verse 2, Let the redeemed of the Lord say so whom he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. And uh, let me skip down here in verse 4. It says, They wandered in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted in them. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distresses. And we see this repeated throughout this psalm, where they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. But God was looking for something more. He was looking for a greater faith because he, he goes on. He says, he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. And then he said, this is what I really wanted. This is what I wanted to see from you. 
Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and his for his wonderful works to the children of men. And they continued on and they found themselves in trouble again. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and he saved them out of their distresses. Then he followed up again by saying, Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. So there's really, you know, God will answer us and God will meet needs when we cry and beg and plead. And he wants to meet our need, but he's looking for someone with strong faith. He's looking for someone who will uh, praise him in the midst of difficult situations, who will offer up the sacrifice of praise. So praise God. I want to encourage you to mark your life with praise as you move toward the things of God, as you claim the promises of God, continue to praise the Lord, continue to worship God, and you'll be like Abraham, who was strong in faith, giving glory to God. God bless you. And uh, come back again for another great lesson. Be sure to subscribe to our channel and, and like us. Uh, uh, leave your comments. We appreciate all that. So praise God. We'll see you again as we continue talking about a life of prayer.